Hey, what's going on guys? Pete here with ProduceLikeAPro.com and today we're going to be taking a look at how to mix some live horns. Now I'm currently in the middle of mixing an indie hip hop track for a client of mine and we've got a bunch of really cool trombone parts in here that are uh, all stacked together playing uh, very cool sounding harmonies. So what I want to do is I want to break it down for you. I want to show you what I've done and why. So that way hopefully you can take some of these concepts on board and apply them to your own mix sessions. So let's jump on in and check it out. All right, so we're inside of Pro Tools for this session. Just so you know, we are looking at all the trombone parts here. Um, they're in this uh, purple, burgundy, red color, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the way that I have all of these routed is uh, uh, we've got a main bone stack here. So I'm calling this a bone stack. Uh, these three are coming to this bone stack bus. And then this bone stack bus is coming down here to this brass uh, bus. All brass bus are like a brass level. Uh, whatever you want to call it, they sound like this. Now just so you know, it gets a little hairy at the end there. I have a decapitator on here. I will show you why I've done that in a few minutes. Um, so it changes a little bit in the, uh, in the hooks. It plays this in the uh, choruses. Okay, then we have what I call the bridge bone, and uh, there are these two parts down here. Um, they're sort of doing a similar thing. They're coming to this bone bridge, and they sound like this. Okay, very cool. And uh, and then we finally have these two, um, I call them bone verb one and two. It doesn't really matter what I call them, but they've basically been printed uh, through something like a space echo. Let's check them out. Um, I got them, they, they printed the effects uh, in, during the session. So, you know, you can kind of hear the delay and hear the reverb on those. Let's check out what they sound like in the context of everything. So this is the, uh, this is the B part of the intro, everything in. If I pull out my guns, we're gonna have some fun. Better start to run, cause they ain't catching us. Stay catching us. Stay catching us, baby. They ain't catching us. They ain't catching us. All right, uh, we're gonna go into the first verse here. This is where we have the, uh, uh, the trombone parts that have the effects on them. And we'll listen to a little bit of that. Hands up, keep them where I can see. Music pointed at your heart, no escaping me. Came to take your hard time, stress, and your grief. Toss them in this bag, slide it over to me. Let them go, place your faith in the sound. Get down, hands up, kiss the ground. This is not a game, don't test me now. Okay, here is the uh, the bridge part. Let's see, that's hook two. Okay, and then the uh, listen to the the way it changes over here in the hook, and this is the last uh, main different change. All right, so you guys get the idea, right? Um, so let's start, I guess, with this uh, with this bone stack here. And uh, if we take a peek at how it's laid out, again, it's important to notice that I have these three uh, tracks going to this bone stack bus. Now, the reason I'm doing that is very simple is I am mixing the three of them together. OK, so I'm sending uh, uh, everything to, to basically be treated as one voice. And this is important for me because 
I think of horns, when I think of horns, primarily I think of, you know, trumpets and trombones. Now, a saxophone is not technically a horn. Some people might lump that into that category, but a sax is technically a woodwind. Um, but it's a similar uh, a, a sort of, uh, um, you, you know, tonality that you can get when mixing these. Now, uh, the reason I'm treating everything together, like I said, is I want it to be uh, sort of one tone okay so check it out if we individually solo all these up you'll hear they're just harmony parts okay that's one second here's the third one so you get the idea right but but since they're all playing the same lick they're just playing it in a different um uh, in a different harmony to each other everything's got to be the same for me so um i'll show you what i've used first thing we're doing here is we're going to some tape all right now the reason that i like sending this to tape is because the way that horns sound um they sort of have a very direct transient that sort of hits um, and what I like about tape is it glues it and it, it it sort of gels it together and it softens it a little bit. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, as always with whatever plugins I use, it's 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 not the plugin, it's it's the technique. And that's really what I want to drive home here. So I'm just using like a Studer setting at 15 nips, smoothing it out a little bit. Um, the next thing I'm doing here is some subtractive EQ and a little additive EQ as well. Um, rolling off some 145 with the high pass filter, taking out a little 200, taking out some 300 and some 500. Okay, so we had some low mid buildup, which I'll let you hear in a second. Then I'm doing a high shelf boost, so a six and a half K shelf boost, and then I'm using a low pass filter. So rolling off everything pretty much below 9K. And the reason is very simple for that is there's nothing above it. Um, and there's really nothing below where I'm uh, where I'm high passing to. Check it out. Look at the uh, uh, the spectrogram. So you can see everything sort of living in the middle there. Uh, the next thing I'm doing here is I am using an 1176. Um, I'm doing some serial compression, but the first thing I'm choosing to use is this uh, anniversary edition uh, of the 1176. This is the UAD uh, anniversary ish, uh, edition. And the reason I'm using this is because it has a slower attack than all the other, you know, the black face or the silver face. Um, I want the 1176 sound, the tone of the fast release, but I want a slower attack because I don't want to squish... Uh, the daylights out of the first transient. So all the way on slow here at one is a 10 millisecond attack time, which is very slow for an 1176. But I have it hanging out here up around four. So um, if my math is right, that's got to be something like five milliseconds, which isn't crazy. Four to one ratio. Uh, we're taking off a couple dB here. Okay, so that's getting the uh, initial transients under control. Then I'm coming through with an LA-2A uh, to smooth it. So we're just knocking off a few dB here. Nothing crazy. Uh, the next thing I'm doing is doing a little bit more EQing. I'm taking out uh, mainly this frequency right here, which is 653. Reason being is there was sort of a, like a weird ringing resonance that I wanted to get rid of. You could check it out. So you could really hear it whistling there and uh, I, I just don't need that. I finished it off with a decapitator, all right? Um, the reason I'm using a decapitator, the reason I'm adding a little bit of saturation to it is because in a dense mix, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, you know, we've got a full drum kit, we've got bass, we have, oh man, what else do we have? Four guitars, three pianos, three organs, um, in total, three, seven trombones, 
two string pads and then 10 vocal tracks so you know in a in a more dense mix um one of the things i like to do is add a little bit of grit a little bit of um sort of texture to the tone that way it'll poke out i do the same thing on bass i'll do the same thing on vocals and the decapitator is great lastly i'm using a little bit of hall reverb and what I'm using for the hall is a good old Lexicon um, 224. Now, the reason I'm using a hall reverb is because we're not just getting the depth and the width from the reverb, we're also getting the height. What a hall does is emulates a concert hall. So what I'm trying to go for tonally is to get these horns uh, to sound like, you know, you're sort of sitting in the audience and you're listening to somebody play, you know, their trombone parts on stage, okay? Just using a small hall setting. I think this is like the default small hall setting and it sounds great. So that is why I'm doing that. Um, I want to show you what this sounds like completely out and then we'll pull everything back in. So uh, again, these are all coming. Oh, and I forgot uh, I'm using the VCC here on uh, on the individual track. So I'm not I'm not doing anything on the uh, uh, on the with the VMR. I'm only using it for the VCC uh, for the uh, Brit 4K E setting. Uh, I pretty much use this in all my sessions. I just like what it does. I like the way it sounds. So let's take everything out. You can hear what these sound like. We'll turn the effects off. Here it is completely dry. So the first move I wanted to make when I was mixing this is I'm listening and I'm saying to myself, okay, you know, the trombones sound good, but they're a little bit dark. They're a little bit muddy. They're a little bit nasally. I need to clean that up. Uh, so that's why we bring in the tape. Uh, and then that's really why I'm doing all of this EQing here is because I need to clean out all of this area. And then I'm just adding a little bit of sparkle on top. So we'll uh, bypass this in and out and you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, uh, pretty big difference. Uh, we're we're losing a little bit of bottom, but you know, in solo, obviously you can hear that, but it doesn't matter in the context of the mix because you really can't tell. Uh, again, uh, bringing in some of the compression. Here is the 1176. Off. So it just gives it a little volume, a little bit of sustain, a little bit of snap, and we'll bring in the uh, LA-2A. Okay, here's an interesting thing. Now listen very closely. You can hear that resonance come out after the compression. So a lot of the times, whenever you compress something, you're gonna hear all of the, uh, I don't wanna say the junk in the recordings, but the noise floor comes up, right? Because not only are you bringing the ceiling down by controlling the volume, but you're bringing all the quieter parts up. So you're going to hear all, you know, things like maybe um, a headphone bleed. You might hear, um, you know, lip smacking or uh, uh, more sibilance, things like this. So after I'm compressing here, you're hearing uh, sort of that... <laughs> It, it kind of sounds like like you're holding your nose, like, bah, da, da, da. like, I know it sounds ridiculous when I'm doing it, but really listen. You can really hear it ring there. So that's why I'm notching out uh, this, uh, what is it, 650? Check it out. When it, when it uh, plays that legato part, you can really hear it if I take it out. Huge difference, and we're not missing any of that area. Here's what it sounds like again, soloed. Just awful, right? Uh, bringing the reverb in, we're getting some of that height as well as the depth 
uh, in this part. And then a little bit of grit from our good old friend, the decapitator, just on the uh, uh, on the ampex setting here. It's subtle, it's nothing big, a little bit of brightness on the tone knob, and uh, and that's sort of how I went about treating the bone stack. All right, so let's just run down and look at the other part real quick. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, and I'll show you why. Uh, if we listen to this guy, we'll solo this up. So during uh, the bridge, I call these the bridge bones, uh, you can hear they're pretty much tonally the same. I don't wanna loop that. Okay, so what I've done is the same thing. I'm sending them to this bus, and I am using the exact same settings. So I'm using the Satin uh, on the same uh, Studer, the same EQ. Now, the reason I'm doing all these same moves here is because um, it's the same trombones being played in front of the same microphone in the same session. So I know that it's the same guy playing the same instrument. Um, I don't need to sort of go in and, and, and dial everything uh, differently, right? Same uh, 1176. Same LA-2A. The only place it differs here is I'm using the Culture Vulture uh, for a little bit of saturation um, on the uh, on the triode setting. I want to get some even order harmonics going on. And uh, and then for a little bit of high-end boost, I'm using the amazing Millennia, uh, the NSEQ2 from Plugin Alliance. Such a buttery smooth top end. I'm boosting some 10K on a shelf, and then I'm boosting a little 2.5K in the upper mids. <laughs> Okay, if I take everything out. Really evident. So a lot darker, a lot muddier, a lot na uh, more nasal to it. Check it out. We'll, uh, we'll loop it and I'll bring everything in. Biggest thing I think you'll be able to hear is the Pro Q2 coming in and out. Really big difference. Bring the hall back in. And in the context of the mix, it sounds like this. If I take the culture vulture out, it's gonna lose a little bit of that hair and a little bit of that cut. Love the way that sounds. The last thing that I just want to point out very quickly is I want to look at these uh, these sort of uh, ghosted out effect parts where uh, they printed them through. Now, all I'm doing on these is a little bit of compression. I'm doing nothing else because they already sound sort of thinned out. They have a, uh, a very specific spot, and I'm just sending them over here to the all brass bus. Uh, all I'm doing on this top one here is I have the uh, Sly Fi Kaya on. It's going through like a, a space echo, like I said. Now the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to just add a little bit of hair uh, to the overall uh, tone. Right, you really hear how that sort of kind of picks up and it cuts through a little bit. Um, and then I'm smoothing out the second one with uh, with an LA-2A. There's not a massive transient on this. As you can see, it's kind of a smoother transient. So I don't really want to, I don't need an aggressive uh, compressor here. I just want something that's going to just, just give it some sustain. And 
pay attention in the context of this verse. Hands up, keep them where I can see. Music pointed at your heart, no escaping me. Came to take your hard time, stress, and your grief. Toss them in this bag, slide it over to me. Let them go, place your faith in the sound. Get down, hands up, kiss the ground. This is not a game, don't test me now. If you get up, you'll be dancing, pal. On the microphone, never hesitant to shoot. This the type of tune, make me wanna salute the roots that grew right through cracks in the concrete. Wait. You don't move back of the black jeep. Now we moving in the right direction. Okay, so there you have it. I mean, there is pretty much every trombone part and how I process them. Um, they're all grouped and they all have their own sounds, their own tonality, um, and they're sitting in their own spots. Uh, you know, and, and again, just I want to emphasize how I treat them very much like vocals. Because to me, uh, uh, horns in general have a very vocal quality to them, and some of the best horn players, you know, you just you, you think of Miles and Coltrane and guys like that, and and the way that they would play, especially Miles Davis, just such a vocal quality to their playing, um, and that's you know in large part due to the instrumentation. Okay, so uh, this is really how I use horns, uh, you know, in my mixes, how I set them up, and how I approach them. Uh, I hope you guys can take some of what I do and apply that to your own mix sessions. All right, so that's it for me. My name is Pete with ProDuceLikeAPro.com and MixBetterNow.com. I just want to say thank you for your time. I appreciate you watching. I hope you all have an awesome day, and I will catch you next time.